which my story goes on. Um, and I don't know, a couple of years later, this is where the where, this is where the infection stuff comes from. So ab about um, uh, well, a couple of years later, I went to to the podiatrist with a very infected toe on my my uh, left foot, and he said, well, he, he did some tests and said, there's bone involvement. Bone involvement's a killer. You, you have to do something about it. So I called my son, who was the uh, foreman of the preventive urology group. Or so. I, I don't know. He did something in a hospital. And um, he, he asked me to you know, if I could come to Phoenix, which is where he lives. And I was in Illinois at the time. And I said, well, son, I can't, I can't get there today. There's no way I can get to the airport, and I'd have to leave my car, and I don't know how long I'm going to be there, blah, 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 blah. And so uh, he said, well, can you make it tomorrow? Well, I thought about that for a little while and said, well, maybe. I'll, I'll see what I can do, see if I can get a friend to bring me, to take me to the uh, airport. So I, I found, I talked to my friend, and he, he said, yeah, I'll be glad to take you. So he, he, he took me to Phoenix, got me on an airplane. I got, got to Phoenix uh, somewhere early, early evening or late afternoon. And um, my son fixed, uh, picked me up and took me home, and I stayed there for the night. Next day. Um, I don't know how early it was. I don't remember. But uh, I went to the podiatrist um, pretty early in the day. And he did a bunch of tests. Man, I, I, x-rays and uh, I don't know what all. He did every test they know about, I think. And... He, he said, yeah, there's bone involvement, and we need to get you in the hospital. So about 11 o'clock, he said, well, you're you're going to the hospital. Your check-in time is at 12. Gave me an hour to get ready to go to the hospital. So I did, and I went to the hospital, and and he performed his magic with a, with a knife on my foot. And I, it got better with a whole lot of antibiotics. I, I had to go every single day to get um, infused with antibiotics, three of them to be exact. They uh, were so caustic that to put them in a vein would destroy the vein. They had to put it directly in the heart so it'd be mixed with the blood before it went to the vein, uh, to the to the veins, arteries, or wherever it goes. So um, I did that for six weeks, and it finally got better. He had he had some other stuff. These little uh, beads. Um, uh, had antibiotics in it and everything. I don't know how many antibiotics I, he had me gone. But anyway, I got um, I got better. So um, a few years later, I go to the hospital. Well, I go. I went to my uh, cardiologist. I went to a cardiologist. It wasn't my cardiologist at the time. And he did some tests on my heart that worried him. He, he said, uh, I think there's leakage in the mitral valve in the heart. Um, okay. News to me, and I didn't even know what the heck it was. So he took uh, me in the hospital again, and, and this time he cracked my, my chest open and did open heart surgery. 
that laid me up for about a month. Um, now he didn't. I the, he knew about G6 PDD. He was one of the few doctors that did. He's an older gentleman. Um, and he, well, he knew something about it. He, he, he wasn't an expert or anything, but he did know something about it. And he um, kind of kept me from, from hemolysis. And he put me on a drug called, um, fa uh, not father, it, it's, it's called warfarin. Warfarin is a blood thinner, and it keeps me from having a stroke, all right, from blood clots being formed in my heart. So I've, I've been taking it ever since. And um, a few years later, I'm back in the podiatrist office again. And this time the, he says, I believe we got bone involvement in your big toe on your right foot. So I said, uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't that toe at all. It was, uh, it, it was another toe on the left foot. Anyway, he, um, he, he said, we're going to have to operate. Okay. So he took me off a of warfarin. And then he waited uh, a day or two, I can't remember which, probably two, and performed the operation. He, now, he had to take me off warfarin because if he didn't, I'd bleed to death uh, on the operating table. So he um, I, he took me off of warfarin and cut my toe open and, and I, everything seemed okay except that um, I was on th these massive antibiotics again and I had to be infused every morning and to get to where I had to be infused was um, about, about a 15 or 17 mile drive. About the third day or so right around in there after the operation, he, uh, uh, well, I, I was not, I, I got up in the morning and I didn't feel well at all and my lips felt funny and I tried to, to spit and it, it went out my right side, I think, and nothing went out the left side so a, a stream went out crooked and and um, so I I thought that was kind of weird but anyway I drove to the um, to the hospital to get infused by the time I got there I, I wasn't feeling very good at all and I told the nurse that I didn't feel very good and she asked me some questions and then she had me squeeze her fingers and do some other stuff. And she turned to the other nurses and she said, we got to get him in the emergency room. He's having a stroke. Uh, excuse me? And uh, so they th threw me in the uh, emergency room, which was just down the hall. And um, I was there for two or three days. Can't remember which. Now um, <coughs> they put me back on warfarin and got got my uh, my blood test in order, and then um, I went on with life. Okay, so. Now comes um, comes the one I want to talk to you about. It's just the most important, uh, but they all are related. Um, I go to my heart doctor, cardiologist, and he says, "Do you know you've been in AFib for the last?" 
over a month. I didn't know what AFib was. And I said, no, I don't. I didn't know anything about that. So I said, well, <coughs> you have been, and it's it's a uh, it, it's going to have to be taken care of. It's it's the bad kind of AFib. I guess there's two kinds. One of them, one of them is not dangerous or not destructive, and this one is both. So anyway, he um, he said we're going to have to get it out, you know, get rid of it. So he he used you know those flat paddles that they use to start your heart. You know, um, I don't know what they're called. He used uh, well, he, he. I think he went. I'm I'm not sh I'm not sure what he did. It's been a while, and I was really kooky about then. So um, he uh, he 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 did it with the, those paddles. He did he did um, he did shock treatment. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not sure if they did it directly with paddles or if he went in and did. I don't know. Anyway, it uh, it, it didn't work. It don't work at all. So he. Uh, Decided to do something else. I can't remember what the other the other thing was. Uh, like I tell you, I was pretty gone about that time, and um, that didn't work. So then he, I, I went to a, a different cardiologist who was going to perform uh, some weird procedure on my heart and he said that'll fix it so they did and it didn't fix it As a matter of fact it got worse and I ended up in heart failure over it well they put me in a hospital and gave me oxygen and all, all kinds of weird stuff had a blasted needle in my arm my, my arm is black from having needles stuck in me for the last well this whole year so anyway they got that cleared up and then um, well we, he, we didn't get it cleared up at that time he sent he sent me for a, a sleep study and turns out that my blood, my my oxygen would get down to 50% during the night sometimes, and it's supposed to be 95%. So he said, well, I think it's that is causing the AFib. Okay. So they gave me this stupid mask that I've got to put on over my face. And there's a little, I don't know, gadget that sits on the desk beside me. And a hose connects the two and it forces air into, into, into my, my lungs if it needs to. You know, it's kind of weird and it really makes me, uh, I, don't, I don't like it at all. It, covers my mouth and nose and uh, anyway I don't like it but I have to use it so uh, next went to podiatrist again this time it was for a cut in the bottom of my right foot well by the time he started he did his test and whatever he had to do he said, well, you've got bone involvement in uh, in this one uh, uh, wound on the bottom of my right foot. He said, you also have bone involvement on your left foot. And so it, it's, it's going to take about four operations to fix it. And he did all four of them at the same time. And he, he fixed it. Um, and I was back on antibiotics, infused antibiotics. So I, uh, 
I started taking them again. And, um, didn't um, it didn't get better. S it swelled up. It was swelling wouldn't go down. Didn't get better. So then he put me on some oral antibiotics. So now I'm taking twelve pills a day. Twelve. No. 12 in the morning and 12 at night. 24 pills in a day. And I have a hard time swallowing pills anyway. And I hated it. I hated that. Some of them were pretty good sized pills too. But I managed to get through it. And in the meantime, uh, they found trouble with my prostate. And they ended up having to have a prostate operation. And, and then they, well, actually, it took them um, about two months f before they operated on me to, to fix that. In the meantime, I was, I was wearing a catheter. And I wore that catheter for, I, I think it was uh, four months. And I, I hated that, too. I was on all these pills and I... Stupid mask and catheter, and I thought they were turning me into the mechanical man or something. But anyway, I, I got over it all, made it through it, um, but not before they had to operate on my foot again four more times. And anyway, they finally got it straightened out and got me on the right pills and and I got and I got uh, I got better so um, what does all this mean well I remember we started this conversation with um, a, a report that said that um, this guy um, died from hydrochloric hydrochloroquine right and there was another study I don't think I told you about the study there was another study done in Europe not too long ago as a matter of fact it's, it's, it's only a year or two old um, and they said that G6PDD inhibits um, your ability to fight infections so what that means is, is that when I become infected with something and uh, you know I it's hard to get rid of well I've, I can tell you that's true because I've been through it several times and I know I know that's true so uh, COVID COVID-19 is no more than an enviro a viral infection, so I and it, our bodies have to fight it off, so that means our immune system's involved, and I, I think, I think, yeah, we can get COVID-19. I know we can, because uh, I've had reports of a lot of people who had it, that also were G6PDD. So that's that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to talk to you about today. Um, bottom line is, yeah, you can get G6 PDD. I don't know if the vaccine is is okay. I now I I took the vaccine because uh, of my situation. If if I got COVID-19 and probably killed me. So, um, I, I did get the, the virus, but, or I mean the vaccine. Uh, but you may not be in that position. And I'm not sure that I'd recommend you doing the vaccine, although it wouldn't hurt you, if uh, you don't have other medical conditions that are could make it worse. Um, folks, I, 
I want you to be healthy. I want you to get through this pandemic and, and come out on the other side still asking me questions and bugging me. <laughs> you want to call it that. I don't. I don't. Um, anyway, I. but I, I've helped a lot of people and over the last 15 years or so and um, I want to continue to help people because you can die from G6 PDD and it's important that you take really good care of yourself so that's my uh, show for the day um, I'm going to be doing these as often as I can manage to uh, this one um, cost me a couple hundred bucks and and took me four days five days longer than I figured it would but I'm finally getting it out I think and um, and we'll we'll do another one as soon as we can now that's comments are very important to me because I need to know what you have questions about um, I can sit up here and give you answers to questions and you may not even have that question uh, but anyway I want you to ask me questions please and I, that's my show for the day. Um, have a great day and stay well and follow the avoid, avoid list and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.